Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's topic is Equality, Part 8. From Sri Aurobindo, the distinctions that have already been made will have shown in sufficiency what is meant by the status of equality. It is not mere quiescence and indifference, not a withdrawal from experience, but a superiority to the present reactions of the mind and life. It is the spiritual way of replying to life or rather of embracing it and compelling it to become a perfect form of action of the self and spirit. It is the first secret of the soul's mastery of existence. When we have it in perfection, we are admitted to the very ground of the divine spiritual nature. The mental being in the body tries to compel and conquer life but it is at every turn compelled by it because it submits to the desired reactions of the vital self. To be equal, not to be overborne by any stress of desire, is the first condition of real mastery. Self-empire is its basis. But a mere mental equality however great it may be, is hampered by the tendency of quiescence. It has to preserve itself from desire by self-limitation in the will and action. It is only the spirit which is capable of sublime, undisturbed rapidities of will, as well as an illimitable patience equally just in a slow and deliberate or a swift and violent, equally secure in a safely lined and limited or a vast and enormous action. It can accept the smallest work in the narrowest circle of cosmos, but it can work too upon the world of chaos with an understanding and creative force. And these things it can do because by its detached and yet intimate acceptance, it carries into both an infinite calm, knowledge, will and power. It has that detachment because it is above all the happenings, forms, ideas and movements it embraces in its scope. And it has that intimate acceptance because it is yet one with all things. If we have not this free unity, ekatvam anupashyataha, we have not the full equality of the spirit. The first business of the sadhak is to see whether he has the perfect equality how far he has gone in this direction, or else where is the flaw, and to exercise steadily his will on his nature or invite the will of the Purusha to get rid of the defect and its causes. There are four things that he must have. First, equality in the most concrete practical sense of the word, samata. Freedom from mental, vital, physical preferences and even acceptance of all God's workings within and around him. Secondly, a firm peace and absence of all disturbance and trouble, shanti. Thirdly, a positive inner spiritual happiness and spiritual ease of the natural being which nothing can lessen, sukham. Fourthly, a clear joy and laughter of the soul embracing life and existence. The first calm that comes 
is of the nature of peace, the absence of all unquiet grief and disturbance. As the equality becomes more intense, it takes on a fuller substance of positive happiness and spiritual ease. The perfected action of equality transforms all the values of things on the basis of the divine Anandamaya power. And as with happenings, so with the persons, equality brings an entire change of the view and the attitude. The first result of the equal mind and spirit is to bring about an increasing charity and inner toleration of all persons, ideas, views, actions, because it is seen that God is in all beings and each acts according to his nature, his swabhav and its present formulations. From the mother, liberty can only be manifested when all men know the liberty of the Supreme Lord. Equality can only be manifested when all men become conscious of the Supreme Lord. Fraternity can only be manifested when men feel that they are equally born of the Supreme Lord and one in his oneness.